Yeah. So this is what I'm using. Kingsford. It's the hardwood, 100% natural. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna be smoking a pork shoulder in our Weber grill using the snake method. Okay, and now comes the part where everyone says I'm OCD and we're gonna make the snake. I did another video where I showed this exact same method, so I'll link that as well so you can take a look if you wanna see. We're just gonna make a snake of charcoal. Um, this charcoal that I'm using is Kingsford. It's the hardwood, 100% natural briquettes. Okay, so this is my snake here. I've got some in the center. I'm not gonna start this until tomorrow morning, so I'm just prepping this the day before. Um, you're more than welcome to do it the morning of or whatever you wanna do to time your cook. Um, I just don't wanna have to wake up any earlier tomorrow to start this pork shoulder. So what I'm gonna do tomorrow is I'll get up, I'm gonna light just these few coals here, and then I'll join them to the snake to then start that snake method going all the way around. For rubs, you really can't go wrong with salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and paprika. That's normally what I do. I'll put in the description like the proportions that I normally use when I do pork shoulders. For this go round though, I'm gonna use this Georgia butts and ribs from Atlanta Grow Company. I've used it I think one time before and it was very good. They normally just kind of put these in when you buy stuff from them, which is kind of nice. So I did not buy this, this just came along with something else that I ordered. So we're gonna try this. I got some wood chunks here. I'm using apple wood. You can use whatever type of wood that you like. This is just what I've found to like. So tomorrow morning we'll come out, we'll light those coals, join it up. We will add um, a pan underneath that we'll put some water in and then we'll throw our pork shoulder on and that's pretty much it. So we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Time to get the fire started. So here I just used a small like fire starter cube. You can really use whatever you want to get this fire started. I usually switch between the fire starting cubes and a heat gun actually. If you're interested in seeing that, you can check out that video there. For a cook like this, I highly suggest that you have some way to monitor the temperature remotely so that you don't have to constantly open up the Weber and close the Weber. I'm gonna be using meter. Um, I'll put a link to a video that I did on meter up here, as well as a link in the description. It is a little bit pricey, so I'll also include uh, the option that I started out with um, on Amazon. It's around $30, lets you remotely monitor um, the pit temperature as well as the meat temperature. If you don't have any of that, then I suggest a meat thermometer so that, you know, after a few hours you can go out there open the lid use this and actually probe the meat i'm going to move these over i'm going to put our or try to put our drip pan in the bottom here just to catch any drippings that we get now once i put the pan in i'm just going to put the grate on i'm going to throw the meat on and then we're going to be good to go we will still be getting some direct heat from this snake onto our pork shoulder so i'm going to go fat side down I don't think it actually makes a difference in a traditional smoker, but in this case, I just want the fat down. What I will suggest is to look up this Barbecue Dragon smoking stone. Um, this goes in underneath your grate and will block all of that direct heat. I'm not gonna be using it today because I want to show what you can do with just your regular Weber, but I suggest looking into it. So. I'll put a link to the video I did on this up above and also just a Amazon affiliate link so you can actually check it out. But I think this thing is awesome and really brings your Weber to the next level for smoking. Let's get going. I 
And I obviously want this gap here so that we don't start burning two sides of the snake at the same time. I just want to start snaking around this way. I'm gonna put my drip pan in here. There we go. All right, let's add a little bit of water to it just so that it doesn't burn up. Fat side down. Oh yeah. I'm gonna take our meter probe here. And just be aware that wherever you put your probe on the grill grate itself, when that fire passes directly by, that temperature is gonna go way up. So I'm trying to put it here in this void. It will be hotter initially, but as the fire moves away, this temperature should go down. What I'm gonna try to do is put my vent on the opposite side of the fire and then kind of every time I check it I'll do that just to try to get that smoke coming across this pork shoulder. So historically because I've done this a few times my top vents I know need to be barely open and the same thing with the bottom vents. So hopefully you were able to see that, but that's where I'm gonna start my vents and I'm just gonna monitor the temperature and make adjustments as need be. Couple little pieces of advice here. First thing, do not try to time this for a meal. That'll just get you into a rush scenario. You'll start cutting corners. It's just not gonna be good if this is your first few times doing it. I would say just let it ride. When it's finished, it's finished. The second thing is, when making adjustments to the vents, make an adjustment, wait 30 minutes, and then see what that adjustment did. If you do not do that, you're just going to constantly be chasing the temperature, making adjustments. So originally, set them with an eighth of an inch open on the bottom, eighth of an inch open on the top, let that go for 30 minutes. Take a look and see if the temperature is still coming up, let it go. If you overshoot, you can close them a little bit, but just make very small adjustments at a time. And we're essentially just gonna let this ride for as long as we possibly can. So try not to open it, because if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Okay, update time. We've been going for four hours and 34 minutes. I have not actually made an adjustment. Um, I started up, I mean, I do have practice at this, so I kept the vents the same, and it's done really well. So this green line, hopefully you can see that. Oh, let's look here. The green line is the temperature, and it's done, done pretty well. I did check the dome temp. The dome temp was around like 220. That's, that's a little too low, so I wanna go up, so I am gonna open the top vent just a hair. I'm gonna monitor for 30 minutes, see what our temperature does, but I'd rather be up closer to that 250 degree mark or this pork shoulder is just gonna take forever. Okay, so we made our adjustment. Things seem to be going pretty well. You usually can feel around the side to see where the snake is. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's real, real hot right here. So we've gotten to this point so far. So we started over here, wow. Yeah, we're almost halfway. I would have liked to get a little bit more out of it, but yep, right here. So it's pretty easy to tell where it is. We're almost halfway at about four and a half hours. So I was hoping to get like 10 to 12 hours. Looks like we're gonna get nine. All right, we are nine hours and 45 minutes in, and the snake is reaching the end. It's still probably got another 30 minutes left of heat, but I can tell the snake is coming to an end because my ambient temperature probe was kind of set right where the snake would end. And you can see this temperature is now climbing significantly, and I haven't made any changes. Here we go, first look. Ooh, look at that thing. And look, there's our fire right there. So we were pretty much exactly right. Gonna lightly tent this to 
hold the heat in. It's coming along great. So far, so good. Let's get the top back on. I know a lot of people are gonna say, why don't you have a table? I should absolutely have a table. It's been on my list to build for ages. But I took the pork shoulder off, put some foil over it to try, try to retain as much heat as possible, just loosely. That's probably not even necessary. Built another half snake or so, just so that you know we can keep going. I don't anticipate this is gonna take many more hours because the internal temperature was already like 165 or so. And that's usually kind of where we stall out and then it'll come right back up. So another few hours, but man, that snake got us about 10 hours. That's so really impressive that it was able to keep us about between 225 and 250 on a Weber with pretty minimal movement of the vents for 10 hours. So. You can do it, you can absolutely do it. Now, opening the top like that, we did just stoke the heck out of the fire. I imagine it's gonna kinda run away on us, so I did preemptively close the vents, or not close them, but close them some, so they're much more choked back than it was before. And we'll just give it, you know, give it some time, see where it evens out, and we'll keep going. We're going on 14 hours but we reached 195, so we're gonna go out there with our thermometer. We're gonna check it, see how tender it is. Oh yeah, that stuff feels awesome. Thirteen hours, forty-nine minutes. The temperature probe started to read one ninety-five. Um, went and took a look at it. Man, it just looked amazing. Was probing really well. We were able to pull this bone out, no problem, just like you're supposed to. Just came out great. The bark looks incredible. We are going to just tent it with some foil and just kind of let it slowly cool down. Not like wrap it like you would a brisket and then put it in a cooler, but just tent it, let it cool down. And then after about an hour or so of that, maybe hour and a half, we'll then pull it apart. just came out awesome. Just to reiterate, definitely, if it's your first few times, do not try to time it for a meal. Just start it, be patient, let it go. This came out absolutely awesome, and this is what you can do just on a regular Weber kettle grill. Hopefully this video was helpful, and you learned something, and you can apply those things, and go out and do this yourself. Thank you so much for watching Break It Yourself. As always, don't forget to thumbs me up, and we'll see you next time. Mm -mm -mm -mm.